that when she entered this tournament, she entered in disguise as her late father, but she proved herself out the list and had royal approval to compete here today in her own right as a female rider. And so, my lords and ladies, if this is to be your show tonight, then why not cheer for her now? And our next night in Arena is for those of you who like a little bit of French. It is our Frenchman, Lord Philip of Aragon, my lords and ladies. The depth of the colours of orange and burgundy, this young and fearless knight was the winner of the Jacques de Paris. And currently, Count Adamar, the black knight, was away at war on that occasion. And so, my lords and ladies, if this Frenchman is to be your chosen knight, then why not cheer for him now? Something most unusual has occurred here today for a local boy from here in Lincoln has made it all the way through to the final. So, my lords and ladies, I give you Sir William Thatcher. Let's get the pants off. He's yellow. When he entered this tournament, he had got barely a suit of armour to his name. But he's managed to scrape himself a suit of armour together and has made it all the way through to today's final. And so, my lords and ladies, if this local boy from here in Lincoln is to be your favourite knight, then why not cheer for him now? Well, one more night still to come. Who can it be? But it is, of course, the reigning champion wearing the deepest red and notorious black. It is, of course, Count Adamar, the Black Knight. He is the master of three companies, the high champion at St. Emilion. Some say he's a treacherous villain who will stop at nothing to be victorious. Others claim he's merely a shining example of a true champion, but I wonder what say you, my lords and ladies, when I say if this is your favourite knight, then why not boo him? I mean, cheer him now! <laughs> so there we have my lords and ladies, our four finalists here for you today. So why don't we be up as I ask you, my lords and my ladies, to please ride and display your colours. So we've got in the blue and the yellow, it is Sir William Thatcher of Lincoln. He's followed by Lady Colville in the green. She's followed by the Frenchman, Lord Philip Aragon in the orange and burgundy. And then coming up the rear in the usual fashion is, of course, Count Adamar the Black Knight. Well, now I hope you've shown me your favourite knight, and I do hope that you will cheer nice and loudly for your favourite knights. For remember, the lads you cheer for the harder and faster they will ride for you. So, my lords, let us prepare with a stern arm to fight the battle, you please. Return to your land stands, our men ready. We will now attempt to strike the quintains, which are indeed the man-shaped objects of either side of the arena. Then each time those quintains are struck, our knights will be hoping to avoid the heavy ball as it swings around. And we're going to get hit by that heavy ball. So we have that squire here, just about to demonstrate just how heavy that ball is. He's really going to get struck by it. He's really struggling to keep that above his head there. And each time they strike this contains, I will be warning you that come, 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 squire, that just means on your feet. I will be warning you when each time the contains are struck, so here they go for the first time, Lady Colville up against Hank Adamar, the Black Knight, a fine strike by both of our knights there. Well ridden, my lord, well ridden, my lady. Remember to cheer nice and lightly for them as they go. A fine strike there, fine. Hank Adamar, nothing for Lady Colville on that occasion, bad luck, my lady, well played. And Adamar, and another good strike there by both of our knights, that's a point of these. Here comes the Frenchman against the local boy, Sir William Thatcher in the blue and yellow. Well, the Frenchman and indeed Sir William both gaining a point there, it really is a close run competition today. And another good strike by both of our riders there, well played my lord and lady. And the Frenchman, a mighty fine strike to that Quintain there, well played my lord. Here comes Sir William, a good strike by him, that's a point for him. And indeed, a point for Count Adamar, well played, my lord. And another point strike there by Sir William. Alas, nothing for Count Adamar on that occasion, sadly failing to strike the Quintain. Uh, you said you, you said you moved the uh, Quintain, my lord. Is that correct? Let me ask you, my lords and ladies, is this indeed correct? Did Sir William Thatcher Squire move that quintain? Did he move it? Did he? No, my lord, I believe he did not, therefore, no point awarded. Please let us proceed without further ado to some peasant's heads, where you'll see at night, with the aid of a spear, attempt to spear the head of a peasant cleanly off the ground. 
I'm going to be cold, I'm going to spear in hand, my lady. Oh, she claims not to leave one, but I wonder how she will fare as they come up to the peasant's head for the first time. Here goes Lady Colbert against the Frenchman, the Lord Philippe Blair. On the far side now, come on, my Lord and Lady, give them a good cheer. Oh, sadly, no point of audience to Lady Colbert there, but she cut her head, did not lift it. And nothing for Lord Philippe. And sadly, nothing for Lady Colbert. I wonder how can Amar will fare up against Sir William Thatcher, here they go now. Here I can lie to remember, oh there's a push there from both of our sides there, cleanly lifting those heads off the ground, well played, my lords. And it's another point for both of our knights, both of them, putting that head off the ground, well played my lords, I think you've warmed yourselves up most decently. Hello, so now my lords and ladies. If you have any favours out there, now is your opportunity to lend a favour to your favourite knight as our knights pass around the tournament field with their lances lowered and their squires will be collecting any favours. So if you have any favours at all, I will be awarding a point to the knight with the most favours. And I will also be awarding a point to the knight with the most unusual favours. So just hold them off, give them a good wave. <laughs> Do we have any things like that? Oh, thank you, Admar, the most resplendent thing of an inn. What is that, my lord? Is it a catapult? Or is it indeed a, a boulder holder? Whatever it is, it's a double loader. And it's still steaming, my lord. Well played. Do you have a lady called on her lads? So William doing very well on the far side there. Oh, I've done well on it. Lots of things here. So don't be shy, just hold them a lot, give them a good wave. Do we have any favours? We come on those horse. Why don't you do that? Making the most of the ladies. Now we will return your favours to you at the end of the tournament. Our squires will come around the arena and return those favours to you. And I can also tell you that anything edible or drinkable might not actually be returned because we do have very hungry and very thirsty nights out there. But any favour is greatly received. Mighty fine helm well off the head of Pan Amar there. He might start a new fashion. Now I can tell you that our favours, our favours, our knights will indeed accept you from him. However, there won't be any cashback. Be going feel free to give them a good swipe. So do we have any more favours now? Don't be shy, they won't fight. Well, the horses won't fight anyway. Well, both the Frenchman and the Adam are returning to their landstand. Obviously, quietly confident they have enough favours. I wonder if this is indeed true for Lady Cobble and Mr. William. Still collecting plenty of favours there. I think it's clear to see that the knight with the most unusual item at the end of that round is indeed Count Admar, the Black Knight. Well played, Count Admar. That's a point for him. And I think the knight with the most items must be Lincoln. Very nice. Sir William Thatcher, well played, Sir William. That's a point for you. It's those points they need to get them through to the final. And so, my lords and ladies, we come to it. It is indeed today's jazz. So my lords and my ladies, you can please present yourself before we have the tilt bell where I will remind you of the rules of the jazz. Today I will be awarding a point for a blow to your opponent between the neck and the waist. I shall be awarding two points for a blow to your opponent's helm, or indeed the removal of your opponent's helm, and a maximum of three points should you enforce your opponent. So let me ask you, my lords, my ladies, and fellow peasants, who wish to see the maximum three points scored? Oh, you're going to sound very sure. I said you wish to see the maximum three points scored. 
So first up is Danny Jones. We will have Lenny Colville in the green. Up against Pat Adamar, the reigning champion. Both of our knights now passing along that to the barrel and displaying their banners an act of chivalry there. Both indicated they do indeed accept the rules of the Jags. So as they've got those helms, those shields and lances, let me ask you, my lords and ladies, who will you be cheering for on this occasion? Wouldn't that be our green goddess, Lady Colville? Or are you saying you your cheers for the reigning champion, Pat Adamar, the Black Knight? Because she is coming for Adley to go up against the Tilt Rail. And he's right there. Alright, Lady Carver, well played, my lady. I'm going for her. Oh. He coming to that rail. And now, my lords and ladies, this is in contact sports. Come on. Oh, there goes Lady Colville. Making that crash still there with her. But she managed to maintain her position a lot. Of course, therefore, it is 2.2 .2 Pan Anmar, the Black Knight. Well played, Pan Anmar. Bad luck, Lady Colville. And Anmar looking very pleased to start the game with those two points. Well, next up in the day, Jax is in half. The local boys, Sir William Thatcher. Going to the Marathon in the Orange of Burgundy. So I wonder who you will be cheering for on this occasion, my lords and ladies. Are you going to be cheering for the Frenchman in the Orange of Burgundy? Or will you have to be cheering for Sir William Thatcher in the Blue and Yellow? Yes, sir! I'm going to have to go and the majority of the cheering there. I wonder if that will be sustained throughout the day's tournament. Minor adjustments that indicate to that silver. See further ado. So my lords, please do indicate if you do indeed accept the rules of the Jags. Here they go, passing on that silver. See that happens there. Both uh, lady indicate they do indeed accept the rules of the Jags, so let us watch more as they don those those shields and glances. Who are you going to be cheering for, Carl? Now let them hear my lords and ladies. Is it going to be our Frenchman, Lord Philly? Or is it going to be Lincoln, Sir William Thatcher in the blue and yellow? Very well, here they go now. Coming up to that still round. Come, come. I wonder if the Frenchman struggling with which side of the still well to drive on. Obviously it's different to his country, but here he goes now. Come on, give him some encouragement, my lords and ladies. Let them hear you. Oh, a fine strike there by the Frenchman to the shield of Sir William. That's a point. Going to the Frenchman who's lost in the approach of the it's still a point. Sir William eating things out with a fine strike through the shield. Oh, Lord Philippe there. And that Lord Philippe squats. Here's Lance for a mended Lance, and here goes the Frenchman against the winning once more. Come on, let them hear you. Give them a good old cheer. Here we go again again. Oh, come, come, my lord. Let us see some contact from you. This is very long. It is to be won. Off his weapons now. And Sir William throws aside his helm there. Well, I think this dispute best is settled on foot. Therefore, Sir William makes his way over to the Macy's here. And his squire is indeed. Who are you cheering for, I wonder, my lords and ladies? Are you going to be cheering for somebody in the back of the blue and yellow? Or are you going to be cheering for the Frenchman in the Orange of Burnaby? Well, come, come, my lords, let us step into the dispute. 
rolls straight through the Frenchman and goes in with a strike to the steel of Arles to William. A good point of hit, spoken by our Knights now. Come on, my lords and ladies, let them hear you. Is it going to be Sir William or is it going to be Lord Philly Oh, Sir William? Loses his footing, he's back on his feet. Back to fight another day. Back, back to fight against the Frenchman. The Frenchman striking, going head to head now. Oh, oh, knocking the shield of Robert from Sir William. He puts in the boot, he puts in the fist. Sir William now hits the deck. But in most days, that confused as the Frenchman takes up that flaming mace. Give Sir William onto his back. Well, my lords and ladies, the Frenchman obviously has the upper hand here. So let me ask you, my lords and ladies, should the Frenchman finish Sir William? Oh, well, he's not going to, because Sir William, he's back on his feet, back to fight. Some more there with the Frenchman. The Frenchman now. Now on his back. So you, well, it looks like the man Rose Chestnut's for team, but not too careful. Let's see, my lord and lady, should Sir William finish the Frenchman? Should the Frenchman yield to Sir William? Well, it looks like the Frenchman went his arms, therefore I think he's yield to Sir William. Well played, Sir William, that's a point for you. Bad luck, Lord Philly. Well played, so as a good night. I think it's going to take me quite a lot of time to accumulate the scores that far. So my lords and my ladies, if you can please present yourselves. I think so well. I think what we should need to do is take a little break. We'll be back here a little later on at 2.30.